Hello and welcome. This is Chandra from McGuire. I'm glad you're here. Today I wanted to talk to you about something important, something I've been thinking about a lot lately as we start this new year, and that is how to keep the joy in crafting. I often will see comments or hear people say that they're kind of hung up on a different aspect of crafting, maybe feeling a little discouraged or uninspired. So I thought it was something good to talk about. And instead of you staring at my face while I just chat on, I thought, I would talk about this as I create a bunch of cards. Now, this may be all over the place, I warn you, because I'm doing two things at once, but I want to make the best use of the time you spend here. I have 10 tips for you on keeping the joy in crafting. These are things that I've learned over the years and I'm hoping are helpful to you. But first, let's get started with our first card and then we'll jump into the tips. Now for my first card and many other cards in this video, I am using my color cubes. These are, there's actually two boxes filled with color inspiration. Now I use these a lot. When I get started with crafting, I'll flip through them, look for a color combination that is inspiring with the products I plan to use. And I use this as kind of a kickstart to create. Now, maybe your kickstart to create is inspiration you find in a video or or on a website. We'll talk about that a bit later, but I usually start with a product in mind and a color combination like you see here. I'll be using these cards a few times in this video. You'll see me do that throughout. Now that I have my colors chosen, I wanted to show you the products I'm going to use on my first few cards, and then we'll start chatting. I have two die sets here that are new from Concord and Ninth. This is the Love Quilt Top Die on the left, and on the right we have the XO Quilt Top Dies. These can be used together or separately. And this actually brings me to my first tip, and that is to think about what you buy. When I go to purchase a new die set or stamp set, I try to think about five different ways or different cards that I could come up with using that product. When I'm looking at these die sets, I can think of many. You have those small hearts with the faux stitching on it that you could use to create a background. You can use pieces together separately. I can come up with many ways to use it, so I know that I'll get my use out of it. I also know that this style of product is something I've used a lot in the past. It's something I reach for often. For example, these were made using some of the older quilt dies from Concord and Ninth. You can see I've used them a lot. I've made a ton of cards, mass producing backgrounds. And because I know I use those, this new style I will also likely reach for. When I use the products I invest in, I find that I'm more creative and I enjoy the crafting more. Now, as I work on this first card, we're gonna start by creating a template for all of those colorful hearts in the background. I wanted to talk more about thinking about what you buy. Now, I mentioned coming up with five ways to use the product before you buy it. That's something I've talked about for many, many years. In fact, in the past, I had suggested like writing it on a post-it note, the five ideas as you purchase it, so that when the product comes in, you can put that post-it note on the set and you won't have to try to remember them. And to make sure I use what I buy, as soon as I get the product into my house, I put it into a bin with other products that are new, products that I just got and I really want to use. That way, the next time I go to create, I can look in that bin and make sure they get used and not forgotten. So that's my first tip is to really think about what you buy so that when it gets to your house, you'll be excited and ready to craft. All right, before we go on to the next tip, let's go back to the card here. I created a template for this heart background and I'm taping the template onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Into all of those heart openings, I will be gluing white die cuts and then on top of that, I'll layer colored die cuts later. Now you could just do one layer, but I like to build up that dimension. So I'm starting with the white and then we'll add the color. All right, while I glue these in place, let's talk about tip number two in keeping the joy in crafting, and that is to make sure we use the supplies that we have. I find it very inspiring to dig through my old supplies and find something I haven't used in a while and include that in something I'm making. It makes me feel like I made a good investment, and I also feel more creative when I use something in a different way. So every time I create a card, almost every time, something on my card is older. 
a supply that I've wanted to use for some time or I haven't used in some time. You'll see me add an older supply to this in a moment. Now here is a suggestion on how to use your older supplies more. Once a month, I go through my old stamps, dies, and stencils, and I try to look at them with a different lens. I look for products I haven't used in a while and think of how I could use them in a different way. Maybe it's an old holiday set. Can I use that to create a spring card? Or maybe there's a sentiment in a stamp set that I've never used before, and I can reach for that. So when I go through my old supplies once a month, I do purge things that I know I'll never use again. But if I come across a dire stamp set that I really need to use again, I really like or I feel inspired by, I'll grab that and put that in another bin next to my new supply bin. So when I go to create, I can grab something from the old and something from the new. Here's a good example. This Floral Friend die set from Concord and Ninth is one that I had in my bin of two use. It says two use on it. It's an older die set, but I've wanted to use the word friend again on a card because I really like the style. So when I needed a sentiment for this card, I reached into that two use bin of older supplies and I found that friend die and it fit perfectly. Now in this case, I'm using that older friend die along with the newer stamp set. This is the Concord and Ninth Perfect Match stamp set. You'll see me use this more later. In it is a small sentiment that says, hello friend. I cut off the small friend word, so I just have a small hello. And I'll stamp that small hello right above our friend die cut. So I'm using a new stamp along with an older die cut to create a new sentiment. Mixing and matching new and old helps you to uh, get more use of your supplies and it gets those creative juices going. I really encourage you to try these first two tips to really think about what you buy and put your new in a bin so you remember to look for it and also to take some of your older supplies and put it in a to use bin so that you can make sure that you reach for those again. This is a big help to me and allows me to be more creative. On this card, I was able to use new and old together and get just the look I was going for. So here's a look at the finished card here. I did layer up the hearts so they're uneven. I love that look of dimension. And I added a few silver hearts th here and there for shine. This is definitely one of the card designs that I hope to mass produce. I'll do a ton of die cutting and assembling these while watching a good true crime documentary. And I can leave the sentiment out and put whatever sentiment I need for a particular occasion when the time comes. Okay, it's time for our second card. I again will use some of these quilt dies from Concord and Ninth. And then after we get started on this, I will dive into tip number three for keeping joy in crafting. For this card, I'm taking that XOXO faux stitch quilt die and I'm going to change it so that it fills the whole front of the card. So I'm lining it up once at the top of the card, then I'll line it up below that. This will allow me to get a different look from the square die. I wanted something not square, instead a rectangle. So by using a little creatively, I have a different look. I will then trim down the sides and start building up the layers of the X and O's in the background. I've already pre-die cut those. I'm going to glue several layers together for lots of dimension. And this brings me to tip number three. My third tip to keeping the joy in crafting is to watch crafty videos, but do so very carefully. Now, I make crafty videos for a living. This is my jam. This is what I do. There are many great creators on YouTube. I encourage you to watch these videos. There are a lot of things that we take a lot of time behind the scenes to experiment with and then share with you. So it's a great way to learn new techniques or new ways to use products. However, when you're watching videos, be sure to not compare yourself to the person you're watching. I do this for a living, and this is an edited video. I edit out all the times I mess up. I edit out all the times I start over. I spend a lot of time working on these. You see 35 minutes, it takes me two or three days. So keep that in mind as you watch them. Don't compare yourself to what you're seeing in a video. 
Also, if you see someone in a video doing something that really isn't you, like for example here, I'm building up tons of dimension. If you don't like a lot of dimension, that's okay. Take the nuggets of information that you think might be helpful to you and make it your own. All right, I'm gonna pause on that discussion and go back to the card real quick. I'm using this new Concord and Ninth Sweet Sayings die set. I love the set. I'm using the Love and Hugs on this card and other cards, and I'll be using some of the other dies later on. The Love and Hugs cuts the letters for Love and Hugs, the outline, and there is a shadow die. So many ways you can use this. Now, as I assemble one of these Love and Hugs sentiments, let's wrap up that last tip. That tip was to watch crafty videos, but do so carefully. Be sure you're looking to them for inspiration, not for comparison. Make sure you're looking for the little nuggets that could apply to you or help you and ignore the things that don't appeal to you. And remember, we all make mistakes. You're just seeing an edited version here on this video. In fact, I kept a mistake in later just to prove to you it happens to all of us. All right, now after I have assembled this Love and Hugs sentiment, I really like the look of it, two tones of gray on white, but the end sentiment covers up too much of that X and O quilted background. So I decided to take this Love and Hugs sentiment and save it for later and create another and just cut the word hugs off. So I have the outline die cut here. I'm going to cut the love and off. So I'm just left with hugs. I'll save that love for a future card. So now I'll assemble the same die cut, but only the word hugs. While I assemble that die cut, let's move on to my next tip for keeping the joy and crafting. And this is a big one. I recommend you focus on inspiration over comparison. This is hard for many people. I totally know it, especially in this day and age of social media, but it's important to focus on inspiration over comparison. There are so many great crafters out there on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and more. They create amazing pieces that are meant to inspire you. They are meant to make you want to craft, to feel that joy of crafting. They are not meant to make you compare to how good their card is and how good your card is. That's not the point of it. The point is inspiration. Here's a good example. Back when Lila was little, she was a little late in learning how to ride her bike. Maybe because she's the fourth kid and we're a little tired, but she didn't know how to ride a bike yet and was a little um, trepid about it, I guess you would say. I had to remind her that everybody learns in different paces. She could read really, really early. Her friend couldn't. Her friend learned to ride a bike really, really early. That's okay. Both are great. Now they're older and they both can read and they both can ride bikes. So don't compare where you are to someone else. You might be better at something than the person you're watching in a video. And they are going to be better than you at some things. It's okay. Don't compare. Just look for inspiration. And along the same line, if you are on Instagram or Facebook, do not look at the number of likes or comments you get on a card. It doesn't matter. As long as you enjoyed creating it and your recipient enjoys receiving it, that is all that matters. All right, now let's look at this completed card. You can see I added the hugs. I just cut the love and off of it. Put some layered dimension on there, a little bit of shine, and added a few hearts. So there I was able to change up that quilt die and use that hugs die creatively. In fact, when I got that love and hugs sentiment, one of the five ideas I had with it was to cut apart the words so I could have different sentiments. As we wrap up this card, let's wrap up this tip of focusing on inspiration over comparison as we look at others' work. Really, anytime somebody shares a card online, it's to inspire, not to make you feel worse about your crafty journey. All right, let's move on to our next card. This is a pretty simple one, but I use some of the products I showed you earlier and combine in some older products all in the same card. So using the quilting die that I showed you earlier, we have a white square and I'm just adding on the pieces to form the word love. I decided to dig in my two use bin that I talked about earlier. These are older supplies that I wanted to be sure to use again. And I'll use one of them for the background and one for the sentiment. This is the Concord and Ninth Happy Rays Stamp and Die set. This was in my two use bin. I wanted to be sure to use it again. 
And also for a background, I found this pinwheel quilt die. I showed you some that I had prepared earlier. I use this background die a lot. And so it's permanently in my to use bin because I reach for it so often. So I'm using those with my new products. Again, making sure I put everything to good use. I also wanted the word and that I could put between hugs and love. So I found this stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. It has a sentiment that I could just cut the word and off of and use that on my card. If you don't like cutting up your stamps, you could always just mask. So this just shows you, I really do try to use that to use bin of older supplies I want to revisit. It really is a time saver. When I need just the right sentiment or just the right background for a card, I can look in there and it usually I'll find something in that bin that works great with whatever new products I happen to be using. As far as embellishments for this, I'm using the new Concord and Ninth enamel hearts. Look how cute these little hearts are. And what's nice is they match up with the eight and a half by 11 paper pad that you see there. I really like that they've come out with pattern paper that's so big because you can make note cards from them. I'll use them in a future video, but for now I'm just using the enamel hearts and I'll use these little clear gemstones or little dew drops later on in this video. By the way, a little tip for picking up little enamel dots. I find it best to take a craft knife and tuck the sharp end of the craft knife underneath the enamel dot and then pick it up and place it on to your project. It just seems to work out really well to use a craft knife. And I like that these enamel hearts really stick nicely so I don't have to worry about them coming off. Now at this point, I changed my mind. This is one of those times where I usually edit it out, but I decided I wanted a mat on this square. So I just tore it right off of my card and I'm re-gluing it onto a piece of dark gray cardstock. So I have a little mat and I'll trim off the excess. Remember, crafty YouTubers make changes and mistakes all the time. We just usually edit them out. So don't ever feel like you're the only one who struggles as you're crafting. Boy, oh boy, do I also. So here's a look at this simple completed card. I did add a little faux postage to the envelope flap. That is from the Concord and Ninth Sweet Saying die set that I showed you earlier. I just glued that on to the envelope flap. And if you glue it on well enough, it'll stay on through the mail. So you can see all the detail in this card and how I combine different products together to get a different look. Okay, let's move on to a completely different style card and we'll discuss our next tip. Now for this card, I again reached my color cube. I found this beautiful color suggestion. And so I chose distress inks that kind of go with it. And I'll do a really quick ink blended background. As I do my ink blending, let's move on to my next tip for keeping the joy in crafting, and that is to focus on your crafty love language. I feel like everybody has a crafty love language, something that you really, really enjoy doing with crafting. For me, it's die cutting. I love die cutting and gluing die cuts together. Um, so for some people, it may be coloring. My friend Kathy Rakusin loves to stamp something and color it on the go. She could spend hours coloring something. That isn't my jam. It makes me a little stressed and a little anxious, but it's what she enjoys. So she focuses on that and I focus on die cutting. My friend Christina Werner loves to watercolor and man, is she good at it. I can't do it. I've tried and it's, again, something that makes me a little too nervous. So I encourage you to find what your love language is and focus on it. Now I'll come back to that tip, but first let's work on this card. I have an ink blended background and I will use the Concord and Ninth Potpourri die set to cut it out. You see that large die there with the large open flower. Now in that open flower, you can leave it solid and stamp one of the sentiments in there. Any sentiment will work, or you can use the coordinating stamp set. Or there's this die here that you can pop in place that'll add the details so you can have a continuous floral background. Then of course there are other dies here that all work well together or separately. That's one of the things I like about Concord and Ninth. But in this case, I'm just using the background die without that floral die insert to cut from our ink blended background. And we'll use this stamp set in a moment and later on. While I die cut this background and cut additional layers to glue behind it for dimension, let's talk more about focusing on your crafty love language or your joy of crafting. 
Earlier, I mentioned that watercolor stresses me out sometimes. Now, I wanted to learn. I tried it. I gave it a go. I took watercolor classes. I learned from Christina. And I just realized it wasn't my thing. And that's okay. If you try something and try to get better at it, and it, you just realize it's not your thing, it's not your love language, then don't do it. Don't feel pressured to do something just because you see it in a video. A good example here, I'm gluing die cuts together to create dimension. I love dimension on my card. I encourage you to try it sometime. However, if you try it and you decide you would rather not to have the dimension, would rather to have a thinner card, that's okay too. There's nothing wrong with that. So watch videos, try new things, but if you determine something isn't your jam, isn't your love language, don't do it. There are a lot of examples of that. Foiling is another good one. I enjoy foiling but I know it's not for everyone. Same with rainbow cards. Rainbow cards are very popular. I saw someone on a message board say they're tired of rainbow cards. That's okay. Do the same card or try the same technique, but in whatever colors appeal to you. Don't feel pressured to try something that isn't within your crafty love language. Okay, back to the card. I glued it onto a white cardstock background that I used the double stripe card panel die from Concord and Ninth. It just creates faux stitch lines. I had a bunch of those left over in my extras drawer. So I glued my die cut panel onto that and then added that to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I also added some of those clear drops from Concord and Ninth pretty quick card to pull together. And I really liked the results of this, so I decided to make another, and I realized that background die could be used with any kind of inky background. And I have a lot of them left over in my extras drawer, so I thought I'd dig through there. And I found a bunch that are alcohol ink backgrounds that I've left over from a previous video. I'll link to that video up here on the top right. I'm going to take one of those backgrounds and use that background die on it and create a similar card but change up the sentiment. And while I do this card, I thought I would mention another tip to keep the joy in crafting. And that is what to do when you lose your mojo, when you aren't feeling creative. My best tip when you're not feeling creative is to prepare for the next time you are. One of the best ways to prepare is to have extra pieces, like I have here, that are ready to go the next time I feel like I'm ready to craft. Another way you can prepare is to organize your supplies. I, for most of us, not everyone, but for most of us, if we're organized, we feel more creative. And the third way is to think of a nugget you learned in a video. Maybe it's a video from me or from someone else, but something that you wanted to try. Try that the next time you don't feel very creative. Usually it will kickstart you. So here is my completed card. You can see that alcohol ink background die cut and added to the card. That sentiment is from a Concord and Ninth die set that I'll show you on my next example. In fact, I love that sentiment die so much that I plan to put it in my to use bin. And the next time I'm not feeling very creative or I've kind of lost the joy in crafting, I will make a bunch of those sentiments so that they're prepared and ready for the next time I want to craft. So to wrap that up, a tip for keeping your joy in crafting is to not get discouraged when you lose your mojo or feel not so creative. When you're not feeling creative, take the time to prep. Prep pieces for the next time you're ready to create. Organize or watch videos and look for a little nugget that you want to try the next time you are feeling creative. Okay, let's move on to our next card. We're going to do some stamping here. And the inside of this card has a surprise. It's an example of where I stretch a supply to get more uses out of it. All right, now for the front of this card, I'm using this new turnabout stamp set from Concord and Ninth called Love Lines. This actually has two turnabout stamp sets, one for the middle and one for the outside. And it has lots of great sentiments. 
If you've never used a turnabout stamp, what's cool about it is you stamp it once and rotate it. Stamp it another time and rotate it. And do that four times until you get a colorful, complete background. Again, this one's special because it has an outside stamp and an inside that you can use together or separately. I'll first show you what it looks like when it's stamped together, and then I'll have a card example where I just use the outside, which leaves that open window. I like that this has a lot of different options, so you can use it in many different ways. Remember that tip of when you buy something, make sure you can think of five different ways to use it. Now this stamp set also has coordinating dies available. This is where I got that love, love, love you sentiment that I used on my last card. I really like that one. And there are other dies that coordinate with the stamp set. I really like that Concord and Ninth make sure that the coordinating dies can be used separately. It doesn't have to only be used with the stamp set. All right, now the turnabout stamps, if you've never used one, comes with a guide. That guide is that clear piece with the black printing on it. I'm taking the outside stamp and lining it up with the printing on the guide. You can see me doing that there. It's pretty easy to see through the stamp and line it up. My stamp's a little bit pink because I've already stamped it once with pink ink. Once I have it lined up with that grid, we will grab our jig. This is a sticky mat from Concord and Ninth, and we'll line up the X on this guide. You see that X through the back center? We'll line up that X on that guide with the X on the jig. Here's our jig here, and you'll see the black X on the guide will line up with the white X on the jig. So I can line those up and put them in the corner of our stamping tool, close the door, and then we can start stamping. However, remember this turnabout stamp has this outside stamp, but also an inside stamp that you can stamp together separate. So I'm gonna stop here and put the inside stamp in also. I just wanted to show you how to use only one if you prefer. So I'm lining up the inside stamp with the black printing on that clear guide. Once I have it lined up there, now we can take it over to, to our jig, line up the black line on the clear guide with that jig that we have in our stamping tool. So I'm lining up those X's. It's very easy to do. And I'll link up here on the top right to a more complete video. Once I have pushed the jig into the corner of my stamping tool, I'll close the door on it to grab both of those stamps. And now we're ready to stamp. I will take a piece of white cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'll put it onto that sticky jig. And it has little guidelines so it's easy to line up. You could put whatever size piece you want on there. I found another color cube color suggestion and I found inks that kind of matched with it and I'll use those four inks for each of the four turns of our stamped turnabout. So we have it in the first position. I have the jig in the corner of my stamping tool. I'm inking up my stamp with the first ink and I'll press that firmly onto the cardstock. Now my inks need some re-inking, so you'll notice that I stamp them a couple times just to make sure I get a really nice impression. That's another nice thing about using a stamp positioner or stamp tool like this one. Now I'll turn my jig one turn and I'll pick the next color, ink up the same stamp and stamp that. Then I'll turn the jig again and stamp with the next color. And we'll do that four times till we have a complete background with all four colors. While I do the stamping, let's go into my next tip for keeping the joy in crafting. And that is to embrace these crafty small businesses such as Concord and Ninth. Concord and Ninth came up with this great idea of doing a turnabout stamp, stencils, and dies. And I love how you can get a creative, unique looking background. So I encourage you to embrace these small crafty businesses. Not only do they create products that keep our industry going and keep us creating, but they offer a load of inspiration at no cost. Anytime you get a product or see a product you're even slightly interested in, you can go to their website and there will always be lots of examples to see there free of charge. Oftentimes they have videos too. Not only do these small businesses work hard to come up with new creative products, but they also look at other industries and find tools that might work well for us and show us how to use them. They research all the options and find out what's best. 
Now here is a die set from Concord and Knight that's really creative. There's a die set and a stamp set. You can buy them together or separate. I really like the die set here because there's so much in it. As I mentioned, Concord and Knight is good about that. But look at those ticket dies. They create little tickets that are connected together by perforated lines. So many ways you can use them. I'll show you how to use the ticket dies later in this video, but for now I'm using those hearts that are connected. They're meant to be little heart tickets, but I'm going to use it to create a pop-up inside of our card. So I use those connected hearts to cut from dark purplish blue cardstock. I want these to stay connected instead of tearing like little tickets. So I'm putting a piece of scotch tape on the back. Any kind of tape would work here. Notice there's a little tab on the right hand side. I also want a tab on the left hand side for the technique that I'm doing. Again, I'm using these dies a little creatively, not how they were originally intended to be used. So I cut another die cut with that die and I'm just cutting off the little flap from the end. So you'll see there's this little flap here with the perforated fold line at the center. I'm going to glue that onto the other side of our folded hearts. I put some tape on the back so that the perforation doesn't come undone and I'll glue that onto the left hand side. So now the left hand side of this little heart die cut piece is just like the right hand side with the little flap sticking out. These little flaps will allow us to glue them inside of our card to create the pop-up feature. I did off-screen white heat emboss as sentiment onto one of the hearts using the Concord and Ninth Potpourri stamp set that I showed you earlier in this video. And now we're going to fold those two tabs back on the left and the right. We'll fold them back and then fold the other hearts in on each other. So we'll fold in and out and in. And now we have a folded piece with the the little flaps or tabs sticking out. On those little tabs, I'll put some strong adhesive, either strong double-sided adhesive or strong liquid adhesive as I'm using here. I'll keep it folded and press that into our open card. And then I will close the card onto the other flap and we'll put something heavy on that and press it down until we're sure it's dry and it's holding nicely. Once it's dry, check it out. When you open it up, we now have this fun pop-up heart feature. And that's not really what was intended with that die, but we got a little creative. And I'm thankful to companies like Concord and Ninth for giving us products that can be used in so many different ways. So that's another tip for keeping the joy in crafting is to embrace these crafty businesses who come up with these unique products. Check out the inspiration they offer on their websites. And if you have some time, send them a handmade card. I think they'll appreciate it. So I added a love and hugs to the front of this using the die set that I showed you earlier. And I also added some clear gemstones. But the fun is when you open it up and see that surprise pop-up feature. Okay, let's move on to our next card. I'm using the same turnabout stamp set as I did on the last one. Remember how I showed you it was two stamps? One you could do the outside only, one you could do the center, or you could use them together. On the last card, I used them together. On this card, I just stamped the outside. So notice the background has an opening where I can add anything I want. I love having that option. You can see my completed background on the left. I did it just like I did on our last example, but I left that center stamp out. For that open space, I'm using those heart quilt dies from the beginning of this video in yet another way. Remember, I always try to think of five ways to use a die set, stamp set, or anything I bring into my craft room. I'm using these half heart die cuts to form a flower. I have my sticky mat here. It happens to be the jig I used for the turnabout stamping before. You can also use it just as a regular sticky mat. At the center, I put a die cut circle. Doesn't matter what color, it'll be covered. I'm putting glue onto that and then placing my hearts onto it or my halves of hearts onto it right up against each other. After I've completed this circle, I will form a flower. It'll have these faux stitched petals, which really were meant to be hearts, but it works great as petals. I will soon put a large circle die cut on top, which really just makes this look like kind of a scalloped um, decoration around my circle. So there are many ways you can use these shapes. Again, this is the joy of crafting, finding many ways to use a supply you have. 
Now I'm going to leave this on my sticky mat while it dries. Once it's dry, I can pull it off and now we have this fun flower or scallop circle. I'll put glue on the back of this and add this to the center of our turnabout background. I love how that opening creates a focal point. To finish off this card, I again used an older set. It's the Concord and Ninth Happy Rays stamp set that I showed you earlier. I stamped the So Nice to Know You with black ink and used a circle die to cut it out and add it to the center of our scallop flower. I also used a Concord and Ninth enamel heart as a simple accent. So this again reiterates that tip of using something new from your new bin and something old from your to use bin together to create a new card design. Okay, let's move on to some more projects and we still have more tips for keeping the joy in crafting. These projects are really fun because they're little match boxes that you can put whatever you want inside. I can think of a million ways to use these and I'll share those as we go. Now this is the Concord and Ninth Perfect Match Stamp Set. Coordinating dies, again, sold together or separately. I used this stamp set earlier, but right now I'm focusing on this die set. It has lots of little dies that can be used in many ways on cards also, but it has the basic dies that create a very simple little box. Then there is this stamp set that can be used to decorate it. There are some really fun ones here to do that kind of match theme. I'm not using those in today's video, but do know that they're available and they're really fun and kind of punny, but I'm going for things that I can use for my kids. So I will be doing some hugs and kisses themes and a rainbow. And I'll be using the Concord and Ninth Sweet Sane die set that I showed you earlier in this video. I thought I'd show it to you again because it's been a while. This is a long video. But notice there are these kind of faux postage looking dies. I'll be using that Hugs and Kisses one on these projects. So I cut the Hugs and Kisses several times from white cardstock and I kept the letters in place. I'm putting glue all over the back of it and then putting just a piece of white cardstock behind there to hold the letters in the openings. I then die cut the Hugs and Kisses many times from other colors of cardstock and I'll pop each of those letters on top of the white die cuts that are already in place. This will give us a little dimension and lots of color on those letters. So while I glue that together, let's go back to the topic of keeping the joy in crafting. My last idea was to embrace the crafty companies, to appreciate all they have to offer and even send them a card if you get a chance. That brings me to my next tip, which is to try to make crafty friends. I know this can be hard. There are many of us who live in areas where there aren't other crafters, but the internet can be a great thing. Join Facebook groups, join crafty groups. You'd be surprised how quickly you can find someone that you can connect with and become friends. Most of my crafty friends I found because I saw them online just being a cheerleader for other people. And that was really inspiring to me. And so I got to know them and we became friends. It's a great way to make a connection with someone who understands the love of crafting. So I uh, have a Share Handmade Kindness Facebook group. There's a lot of people have become friends there. You can reach out to others. I encourage that. It's always helpful when you have someone who understands your love of crafting. Also, you can share cards. You can send each other cards, share inspiration. You could even Zoom together and do some crafting. I do that often with some of my crafty friends. Now, as someone who suffers from anxiety, especially social anxiety, I know that can be scary. But there is somewhat of a safety zone around the crafting community online, and it's something that I really encourage you to try. Try to make some of those connections. It can really help to keep the joy in crafting, and you have someone to send your cards to. Okay, back to the projects. I have my little hugs and kisses assembled, and I have these leftover pieces, lots of leftover pieces, that I can save for later. Remember, be prepared for the next time you feel creative. Now it's time to create the little boxes for these. I'm using those perfect match dies from Concord and Ninth. There are two dies, you cut the two pieces and basically you just fold along the score lines the die creates and add a little strong adhesive. I like to use strong liquid adhesive. 
Here I am forming the base, which means folding in on all of the lines and then putting strong adhesive along the little flaps. We'll do that on both sides and that creates the base of the box. Now this box can hold a lot of things. You can fold up money, you can fold up little notes and put it inside. You could even put little chocolates. Remember the die set has little matches that you can put inside and you can stamp something on the side of the matches. But I am going to put little chocolates in here and put them in my kids lunchbox. And we'll probably do this as little Valentine favors in my daughter's class. But all you do is fold those little flaps in and glue it, and there you have the base of your box. Now for the outside of the box that slides on and off, you just put strong adhesive along the smallest little flap, and then adhere that to the opposite flap and put something heavy on it while it dries. Now while I decorate the outside of these boxes, I thought I would mention my next tip for keeping the joy in crafting, and that is to mail your cards. I know we create a lot of cards and we love making them and sometimes it's hard to part with those cards. But I really recommend giving them to someone. That is the biggest joy of making cards. If you want to, you can make two of the same cards so you can keep one. Or you can just take a photo of your card with your phone and keep it in an album so that you can refer back to your older cards anytime you want. But mailing those cards will definitely keep the joy in crafting. Okay, back to the projects. I used the Just My Ticket dies from Concord and Ninth to cut these white ticket dies that fold up nicely and fit inside the box. On these die cuts, I plan to write a little message that I can put in my daughter's lunchbox. I like to include something in our lunchbox every day to give a bit of encouragement. I did create this third box here where I put a little rainbow, sunshine, and stamp, all from the Concord and Ninth Perfect Match Stamp Set and Coordinating Die Set. So many ways you can use these. You can even glue multiples together to include even more little chocolates or little gifts. While I show you a closer look at these projects and a bonus card that I created using some leftovers, I wanted to talk about my last tip for keeping the joy in crafting. And this is an important one. This tip is to remind you that crafting is a guilt-free zone. No guilt should exist in crafting. Do not feel guilty for how much time you spend crafting or how little time you spend crafting. Do not feel guilty if your craft room is messy or if your craft room is clean. Do what works for you. Don't feel guilty if you enjoy collecting craft supplies and not using them. That's okay. And don't judge others for how they choose to craft. Don't feel guilty if you don't want to try, say, foiling, but others do. Do what works for you. Don't feel guilty if crafting is what gets you through the day, if it's your therapy. Don't feel guilty if spending time in your craft room is what you look forward to most. Do what works for you. Don't feel guilty about any of it. This is supposed to be your joy and make sure you're keeping the joy in crafting. I hope this video was for you and please don't feel guilty if one of my tips isn't helpful for you. Again, look for those nuggets that are. I am thankful you spent this time with me. I hope it was somewhat helpful and we'll see you again soon with a normal crafty video.